Hello and welcome back to the Teach to Learn channel. Right now we're going to be doing the Use Recursion to Create a Countdown lesson from the basic JavaScript course in Free Code Camp. So here goes. In a previous challenge, you learned how to use recursion to replace a for loop. Now let's look at a more complex function that returns an array of consecutive integers starting with one through the number passed to the function. As mentioned in the previous challenge, there will be a base case. Recursive functions always need a base case unless they never finish executing. The base case tells the recursive function when it no longer needs to call itself. It is a simple case where the return value is already known. There will also be a recursive call, which executes the original function with different arguments. If the function is written correctly, eventually the base case will be reached. For example, say you want to write a recursive function that returns an array containing the numbers 1 through n. This function will need to accept an argument, n, representing the final number. Then it will need to call itself with progressively smaller values of n until it reaches 1. You could write the function as follows. So here we have our example. We have function count up with an argument of n with an initial if statement with our base case. So if n is less than 1, then our function should return an empty array. Else, so if n is greater than 1, our const or variable, you can use whichever one here, um, count array will be assigned our count up function with n minus 1. So after this, count array will be pushed the value of n into it, and our function will return our count array variable. So then they log this into the console to show you um, what they get, and the value, the array with values 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 will be displayed in the console. At first, this seems counterintuitive since the value of n decreases, but the values in the final array are increasing. This happens because the push happens last. This right here happens last. After the recursive call has returned, at the point where n is pushed into the array, count up n minus one, this right here, has already been evaluated and returned one, two, three, all the way up to n minus one, depending on your value for n. So we have defined a function, this is the challenge right now, called countdown with one parameter, n. The function should use recursion to return an array containing the integers n through one based on the n parameter. So this one is going the other way. This one should be decreasing. If the function is called with a number less than one, the function should return an empty array. So that is our base case. When n is less than one, our function stops. For example, calling this fun function with n equals five should return the array five, four, three, two, one. Your function must use recursion by calling itself and must not use loops of any kind. So we have our function right here called countdown and with our parameter of n, so a value will be passed onto it as an argument. And let's start this function off with our base case, which they told us is that when n is less than one, our function should stop executing. So if n is less than one, then our function should return an empty array. Else, if our n is greater than one, else, our variable count array, which will be our array, will be assigned our count down function with n minus one. So the function will be calling on itself. And after this is done, our count array, similar to the example um, instead of being pushed the values of n, will be unshifted the values of n. So meaning our array will receive the values at the beginning. So when this is done, let's say that our n is five, our values of n should be pushed from the left. So it should go five, four, three, two, one, and so forth. So count array unshift our value of n into the array 
and then return our count array in its entirety. So let's log, I believe this function is now done. So let's log it into the console with an example. Console log, let's say that our value for n is seven. No, no wait, I, I gotta log in the function, you know? Countdown seven. So there we go. Now we get an array with values seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Um, which is what they asked for, which is what they asked for right here. So our function is now done and we've successfully completed this lesson. So let's run the test. And there we go. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.